All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal, Patreon, and the YouTube membership thing are all down below if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So continuing with the agriculture themed videos this month, the actual food carrying capacity of the world. So in terms of the Earth's total agricultural carrying capacity, it is obviously in excess of 8 billion people as there are now 8 plus billion people on Earth. And as I assume almost anyone watching the video is aware, the degree of food distribution between different regions and different countries is not exactly equal. It's not, it's not an even spread stretched as far as it can go. There's quite a bit of skewed numbers in terms of excess availability on excess store shelves in a number of places. So obviously, the amount of people supportable food-wise by the amount of agriculture-suited land that is currently being used for agriculture is obviously in excess of 8 billion. So what is the total hypothetical number? Not where there would be any exact hard cap because things always fluctuate. It is actually above 10. The likely limit would be somewhere around well, as compared to the 8.1 or so billion that exist on the planet at the moment. And this is from a combination of if land that is arable, that is viable for agriculture, but is not currently being used for such, were to then be used for such. And side note, that does not include, because people are going to think this if I don't specify it, that does not include Cutting down rainforests to switch those over to graze land or agricultural land. Former rainforest soil is only viable to grow things in in a decent proportion for like two or three years after the area is deforested. We're also not talking about expanding into the open savannas in Africa, for example, as that type of grassland is not the kinds that would support crops in the way that we need them to. Climate is different, soil is different, nutrient cycle is different, everything. So taking that into account, along with the fact that we do have a ballooned excess availability in a number of regions and countries as compared to others or as compared to the rest of the world, that also could be a bit more evenly dispersed out that would also enable wider numbers. All factors together are giving us the possible total of about 12 billion, with just some specific examples of unused agricultural land. Angola currently grows enough food to feed about 30 million people, while their population is closer to 40 million. Keeping the former caveats about rainforests and savannas in mind, their total potential agricultural land in Angola's case, just to use them as one example, is actually enough to, if it were all used, feed close to 150 million people. So their population aside, that would be an additional 100 million people fed from the unused arable land in Angola. Over in Argentina, for another example, their Argentina already grows enough to feed 200 million people. However, they have enough further south as you go further down into Patagonia to feed closer to 300 million in total. So if that were all to be used, that would be an additional 100 million people's worth of food. In the case of Kazakhstan, they feed close to 100 million, but could feed up to somewhere between 150 and 200. Ukraine, before the Russian invasion, fed in excess of 120 million people. Now a sizable enough portion of agricultural land is not used because it's directly in the fighting zone or close enough to it to be too risky. Some countries like Sudan, Afghanistan, Syria, do have decent enough bits of agricultural land, but it's never really being used and they're constantly relying on food aid because they're constantly either in a civil war or in some form of terroristic instability. And it's not all just unused agricultural land. In some cases, it's a case of misused agricultural land, such as in the U.S., for example, a large amount of corn is grown explicitly to make corn-based ethanol fuel, which is kind of completely pointless. 
because corn made ethanol fuel is a one to one energy return on energy investment ratio, meaning the exact same amount of energy that is obtained from the corn ethanol fuel when it's used as a fuel. That same amount of energy is needed for for the growing and producing of each additional unit of corn ethanol fuel again. So there is no net gain of any kind. It was and is still a misadventure, and one that, like a lot of things that a lot of countries' governments have done, that I'm sure plenty of you from your own countries have examples of, we're just kind of locked into now after, which is just tied into human ego of not really being able to admit the fact that you made a bad choice. As opposed to, say, sugarcane ethanol down in Brazil, for example, which actually is worth something because it has a net energy yield of between 6 and 10 to 1. If the land used in the U.S. to grow corn that just gets made into ethanol fuel were used to grow food for people, whether that same corn that then just gets turned into maize meal or whether the corn is switched out for wheat or whatever you choose to do, it would be equivalent to about a hundred million people's worth of food annually. And then you come to the second portion, the second factor, and that is the lopsided food availability issue, in that using the U.S. and Canada for a prime example, way more food is actually provided or put out onto shelves than is ever or could ever be consumed by the nation's actual population. If you go to any store in the U.S., Canada, and in many cases in Australia as well, you will see even just to just use something as basic as bread, for an example, you'll see a whole aisle of different loaves of bread, and not just a single set, a single row, or a single column. You will see bread upon bread stacked on top of each other with multiple additional rows and columns stacked on behind those ones further back on the shelf, and this is the case in each and every store. You got a uh, Walmart here, a grocery store here, a grocery store here, grocery store here, Walmart here, and no matter if everyone did all their shopping at once, it would not empty those shelves, not even close. The excess food availability provided in the U.S. example is depending on the store density in any particular region, anywhere from two to as much as four times the actual likely food needs of the U.S. population. So at minimum, the overt, overconsumptive excess that is made available in stores in the U.S., a lot of which, again, doesn't get bought and consumed before it just ends up going bad or having to be tossed out, if a fair portion of that were to be not oversupplied onto U.S. store shelves and actually instead distributed elsewhere where, you know, people need food. The excess amount in the U.S. is at minimum another 300 to 400 million people's worth of food. And again, because they're the most similar to the U.S., Canada and Australia have a similar ratio. European countries aren't as bad just because the sheer amount of stores is less, and also the volume that gets put out in excess is also less. But the excess in all of them put together would still yield out to another 100 or 200 million people's worth of food. Most of the developed nations in Asia are in the same vein as Europe. But that's about it. Those are the two those are the two main avenues of approach with this that you have to take into consideration. It usually will take you to somewhere around a wobbly soft cap of about 12 billion or so. Not that we're ever actually going to need to feed that many people, as the global population is not even going to exceed 10 billion. And you can see this link to a different video going in depth about that. But if needed, we could actually feed up to about 12 billion people before things would start getting iffy, start getting a bit stretched. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. There's a link in the description to a Google Drive 
with all kinds of different graphs and stuff you can find there for free about everything from energy to mining, demographics, food, all kinds of stuff. There's a link to my photography Instagram and one to my cat's YouTube channel in the top in comment. May God bless and protect all of you and I will see you all around next time.